Hey, it's Mike here, and today, are those blue zones, those areas of the world where people seem to live much longer, actually just based off fraudulent data, are they completely fake as this preprint claims? Is this just all a scam to get you to garden and try to make friends and eat some more vegetables? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sort of level-headed approach to this, and I'm gonna have other people mostly respond to the claims from the study. We're gonna go major claim by major claim and have demonstrated Demographers in their official response respond as well. And then later on, we're gonna check out and see if the general blue zone lifestyle habits are actually backed by other data, looking at studies on longevity, mortality, et cetera. And lightning fast, you might know that I have two vegan trips to Costa Rica, one in late January, one in early February. And while they were completely full, life happens. Just a couple people had to drop out of the January one. So if you wanna film one of those spots, eat a bunch of good food, see some slots, now click the link below and go to vigotravel.com. So the preprint study itself was done by a Saul Newman, not Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad, not the lawyer, completely different one. And this is a guy who is a postdoctorate, a research fellow at the Demographic School in University of Oxford. You know, he said he was worried about people thinking that some blueberry or something was gonna be the silver bullet for longevity and diluting themselves. Quote there seems to erase any dietary component, perhaps why the message here is so popular. So to be cheeky, uh, yeah, this newer 2024 study found a 21% lower all-cause mortality during the study for blueberry consumers versus non-consumers, even after adjusting for confounders association, but still. And the paper itself was published again as a preprint, which means it's not peer reviewed, allegedly submitted four years ago. I don't know why it hasn't been published in a peer reviewed journal at this point. And it did go under my radar when it came out, but recently it has gotten more attention because it won the Ig Nobel Prize, which is an award for things that at first make you laugh and then make you think, which I think is generally a good thing. You know, do they have rigorous enough of a criteria for entry? I don't know, but either way, a lot of major news organizations picked this up, whether we're talking about Al Jazeera, NPR, I effing love science, the conversation, et cetera, took it very seriously. And I think this has all become even more in the public sphere because the Netflix documentary series titled Live to 100, Secrets of the Blue Zones has come out. So this is like headlines everywhere. And there's one line of the study that I think summarizes the thesis here, the main issue with these centenarian claims, and that is quote, the majority, if not all remarkable age records may be errors. <laughs> we can move to the larger idea of pension fraud and that causing a lot of false centenarians that, you know, some of these people are just taking rest in peace, maybe a little too literally and not even telling people they died. Japan has a massive pension system. And so family members whose loved one who has a pension dies might just say that they didn't die so that they can keep collecting the money. This is clearly an issue. It's been written about for decades, but he then goes and uses that as a reason for the the Okinawan centenarians existing, as well as like lost bombed records. And there was even a study that was concerned about this exact question and went to Okinawa and just tried to validate, are there all these centenarians, all these older people? And the title of the study sort of gives it away, quote, they really are that old. A validation study of centenarian prevalence in Okinawa. They conclude that the high prevalence of centenarians in Okinawa is valid, and they actually outline all of the steps they went to with which, you know, you can pause to read this, but we're talking about actually arranging a visit with the centenarians, then looking through things like medical records, school records, military certificates, etc., on and on, reconstructing their family trees, corroborating with the family, and then excluding people who didn't meet that criteria. And I found a quote from him in the conversation that got me a little bit concerned again for extrapolating things from Japan to Okinawa and then just potentially getting things really wrong. He says, quote, Okinawa in Japan is one of these zones. There was a Japanese government review in 2010, which found that 82% of the people aged over 100 in Japan turned out to be dead. The secret to living 110 was don't register your death. And there's actually a very good study in the Journal of Demographic Research all about this topic. They say there are five systems which can measure centenarians, one of which is actually a centenary in the list. But yeah, the survey he mentions used the Koseki or family registration system. I will say it's not the best, but get this, in the study where he claims this 230,000 missing centenarians point, he cites that study about how there really are that many old people in Okinawa. And yes, that study also did use the Koseki system, 
but it was trying to validate it. So it's more of a signal that you can look at. And they found it was accurate in Okinawa. And perhaps that's because, you know, in 2010, well, there were 128 million people in Japan, plenty of room for errors. There were just 130,000 in Okinawa, making it less likely that their Koseki or other registers were flawed. And speaking of other registers, a sister investigation by the government, which also occurred in 2010 as well as 2011, using the clearly better resident registry system resulted in a hunt for missing centenarians. The findings, get this, across all of Japan, there were only 584 missing centenarians and well, pension fraud, only 77 were still receiving pensions. The worst part for Saul here, there were no missing centenarians and therefore no pension fraud cases in Okinawa, 0%. Yeah, they were one of the few prefectures in Japan that were at zero. Uh, so yeah, retract the paper. <laughs> and also from 2015 data, after all of that allegedly debunked data from Japan, yeah, from the Okinawan centenarian study, their centenarian rate was still nearly 70% higher than the Japanese average, despite it really being a fading blue zone altogether. Another claim of Saul's that makes me a little bit worried and makes it seem like he doesn't understand the history of Okinawa as much was as stated here, for example, despite vegetables and sweet potatoes being promoted as key components of the Okinawan blue zone diets, according to the Japanese government, Okinawans eat the least vegetables and sweet potatoes in Japan and have the highest BMI. I think a lot of you that watch my channel already know the answer to this, and that is sadly the shift to Western diets for Okinawans. And some of the demographers that were involved in research on these blue zone populations got together and responded. And the response is quite long, responding to particular points and lines from this study. So we can't cover it all here, but Dr. Bradley Wilcox, who is the director of research of geriatric medicine at the University of Hawaii, who says he quote, talks about the current state of some of these longevity hotspots with no understanding whatsoever of these populations. For example, he states that the Okinawans are currently very unhealthy. Who is he talking about? The young Okinawans eat and drink too much, they are not physically active, and they have a rampant diabetes. Unlike, of course, the older population who grew up eating completely different food, have a different non-westernized, non-modernized lifestyle. And that is perfectly illustrated by this late 40s study showing that 70% of calories were, yes, from sweet potatoes in this Okinawan population. And actually that 97% of their calories were from plant-based products. Also once again, corroborating the plant-based aspect of this. But moving past, just focusing on Okinawa, you know, from the Italian demographer Gianni Pace, PhD, who as far as I can tell has authored well over a hundred peer-reviewed papers and has been studying Sardinian longevity, that's one of the blue zones since the 90s. In response to the preprint's birth certificate claim, which was, quote, overall only 6.6% .6 of super centenarians, people over 100, have an original birth certificate and 74% of cases have no reported birth documents of any kind. And this is where the issue of just data set quality arises rises and it appears to be the case that we have data sets that aren't used in science which can have more inaccuracies and ones that actually are to Gianni quote not all alleged supercentenarians have birth and death documents but the validated ones do here the ambiguity is due to avoiding the distinction between supercentenarians included in non-scientific databases and those maintained by scientific organizations that are required to publish validation documents. You know, so we might have some crappy data sets out there with a bunch of 120 year olds, but those aren't the ones that are making it into the blue zone related studies. And then Saul also mentions that there's this data clumping. We see more people born in years divisible by five. Clearly that's proof that this is all fake. Well, but as Giovanni responds, the actual data sets used in the studies do not have these anomalies and actually just shows a straight up example here, you can just pause to read it, not clumping. And for the quality of data set point, I think it's interesting that Saul, when interviewed by The Conversation, cites Eurostat's first ever year of Sardinian data and how they were mediocre in terms of lifespan. I think it's interesting that Saul viewed those stats as correct when they were poo-pooing on Blue Zones. Just noting. Another major claim Saul says is, quote, I've tracked down 80% of those people aged over 110 in the world. Of those, almost none have a birth certificate. 
And this is where I appreciate having Giovanni's answers because he's been actually studying these people for decades and has solid responses. Sorry, there's a lot of long quotes here, but essentially says that since 1866, which is a solid 160 years ago in Sardinia, both governmental and church records of life have been taken of the Sardinian centenarian studies. All but one alleged centenarian had a matching government and church records. And finally, quote, this double certification ensures that the probability of errors in the date of birth is virtually zero at least for Sardinia, the implication of an absence of birth certificate is ridiculous. By the way, Gianni himself says there is no silver bullet. Here he is. I am convinced that uh, there is no a single explanation of the exceptional longevity that we have described and that we have observed in this blue zone. Uh, unless we, we put all, all the things together. Another claim of the preprint is that some of these blue zones seem to be lower income, which shouldn't make any sense because in general, increased income correlates to increased longevity. But from the general Blue Zones article response, quote, yes, certain Blue Zone regions like the Ogliastra cluster of villages in Sardinia are among the more remote or poorer regions of the country. There are also places where modernization in the Western diet have been slower to take hold. The people there walk rather than drive, eat more beans and plant foods than processed and fast foods, and they connect with their neighborhoods more than watch TV, et cetera, et cetera. And that most people in America will die of diseases of affluence like heart disease, cancer, etc. And there's another important retort that they have, and that is that, yeah, blue zones, well, they have an element of people living over 100. You know, if you actually look at the criteria for a blue zone, it doesn't have to be centenarian. So even if all the centenarian data is fake, just the idea that there are more healthier, older people make something a blue zone. And on the blue zone website, they even specifically say, quote, the proportion of a nonagenarian, which is 90 year olds or centenarians alive in the total population might not be used as an indicator for a blue zone, except with extreme caution as important biases may exist as demonstrated in scientific papers. So uh, why didn't they get an Ig Nobel prize? And speaking of biases, I think the reason that this Ig Nobel Prize and that preprint have been received so well is because it's once again a situation where they're telling you, yep, good news about your bad habits. The idea that all of these things that I'm told I have to do that people in blue zones are doing, whether it's keeping moving or it's talking to your neighbors, God forbid, or eating a plant-based diet, screw that. I wanna hear that this is fake. And one response I've seen like across Reddit is that you know, the blue zone people might be trying to defend themselves here, but clearly they make money off this, so they must be wrong. You know, they are biased as well. And to that, I have to say, uh, yeah, they probably do have some degree of bias, but Saul also has incentives. For example, notoriety gained from taking down blue zones. So I try to find somebody who had less skin in the game here. And we have from an NPR article, Raya Kierbeck, Chief of Geriatrics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, she says, quote, it really is an important study because it pushes the field to scrutinize the data more rigorously, but the conclusions may overstate the extent of the errors. And that quote, the robust data does not depend on birth certificates from areas of unreliable records. So once again, comes back to these data sets and really taking a grain of truth and stretching it to shoot down the blue zones. Yeah, there is fraud in various areas to various degrees, whether it's pension fraud or you know maybe a lack of birth certificates, but these areas have been studied more rigorously and have been validated. And the ones that haven't been validated as blue zones mentioned, haven't been included as blue zones. That's why despite Saul using a UK region with a bunch of fraudulent centenarians in it, it was not considered a blue zone. And then really fast here, I have to just ask the question, looking to other data on studies that are not on people in the blue zones, just looking at lifestyle habits and seeing, do they correlate with these alleged beneficial lifestyle habits in blue zones? First, we have that whole social aspect saying, yeah, if you're more social, then you might live longer. That's one of the things they do in the blue zones. Well, from this study, quote, when multi-dimensional assessment of social relationships were considered, the odds of mortality increased by 91% among the socially isolated. Wow, way to make lonely people even more depressed, researchers. No, but is that really that hotly debated? And then we also have exercise or really staying active into old age, which again and again is clearly associated with lower mortality. Like this isn't rocket science. Oh, but what about diet? What about vegetables and plant-based diets? That's all just fake. Oh, well, no higher plant-based diet index over and over again, associated with lower mortality, just higher vegetable and fruit consumption, 
associated with lower mortality. And from this study, legumes are the number one dietary predictor of elderly survival. Like, none of this is rocket science. Yep, checks out. So I think in the end, the real issue here is that the preprint largely conflates less scientifically validated data sets with maybe more fraud, more information holes, weird statistic anomalies, and then tries to apply them, even if they're for a whole country, tries to apply them to some little blue zone here and there, which seems, in my opinion, misguided. Again, Dr. Giovanni Pace, over 100 peer-reviewed studies, studying Sardinia since the 90s and on and on, made a pretty good argument, in my opinion, for why there is a valid data set, that they've been careful. These are people's their job, their demographers. They need to go and see are these people really alive? Is this data real? It's been verified there. It's been verified in Okinawa. I don't think it was ever up for debate in the Seventh-day Adventist population, for example, again, where the plant-based people live much longer. And this is where it's frustrating when you've had an entire group of researchers go to Okinawa and rigorously verify the centenarians. And then like, that's not even mentioned in the preprint. Like what? You no, know, he'd rather just cite crappy whole Japan data sets. Anyway, at this point, you're totally getting it. It's frustrating. You know, he's taken a grain of truth and used it as a bomb against, you know, something that's really just meant to help people live longer by doing well-backed behavioral changes. Like compared to all these mega processed food conglomerates and fast food restaurants and stuff, like Blue Zones is a pretty innocuous target to try and take down. So, you know, whatever, you do you, I guess. And again, if you are interested in filling one of those very few Costa Rica vegan trip spots, click the link below and let me know down below what you thought about this. There's a lot of points made in that preprint. If there was a big one that I missed, let me know. Or if you have an answer to any of those or other answers I didn't include, comment down below. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.